uh, there's fences going up uh, and all sorts of things and a move by a political party over there to reduce the herd and the only way you reduce the herd is stop your breeders breeding or you take the knife to the beast. Uh, but that's basically what they're talking about because of the uh, emissions from agricultural animals. Now, I know when we've had this debate about energy emissions and we talk about electric cars, people don't really understand where the transport push is coming, but it will be to stop petrol and diesel vehicles. And, of course, straight after that, once we've done energy, we've done transport, the real push to the left is what we eat, in particular agriculture. They want to see herds reduced. They want to see us uh, stopping to eat meat. In fact, there's a formal position from the UN about meat-free days per week for humanity. This is the thin edge of the wedge, isn't it? Well, yeah, and I mean, look, when I was growing up, the whole idea of having a meat-free day a week, we called that Lent. But now we just have this situation where the UN is pushing this idea, which, you know, shows that this climate change thing is as much about a religion, a new religion, a new materialist religion uh, of globalism than it is about anything else. And it's a really interesting thing, I think, that's happened here in the Netherlands. The farmers are fighting back, and the farmers have a real power here. They have more power than I think a lot of people in the cities realize, which is they can bring a country to a stand still. And if they don't work, a country doesn't eat. But, you know, it's interesting what you say about this push to make people not eat meat. We see, we've seen it coming from the left for a long time, but now it's being supported by a lot of corporates. We've been seeing this push to plant-based meat, this, you know, which I think is even a misnomer. It's, it's not meat. It's plant-based patties or whatever. And they're trying to convince people that this is superior, this is better. But what happens when that happens? Well, Small agriculture, uh, farmers, cattle farmers, uh, chicken farmers, poultry farmers, whatever, they're pushed out and control of the food chain moves away from those smaller suppliers to big corporations that can both control and create the, the plant-based material, but also then process it because, of course, it's not just like sending cows to an abattoir to make these, uh, to make these plant-based products. It's, it's, a, it's a complicated laboratory type of thing. And... To see a pushback in a place like the Netherlands is really, really heartening. I think we need to see it in more places. I mean, Jane, you're in the great state of Western Australia, which uh, thank you for <coughs> your resources and exports and other places as well. We've kept Australia solvent for nearly three decades. But, of course, agriculture is key in all of that. Now, I'm going to stop coal mines, which is what our friends in Brisbane mm. want us to do, and suddenly we're not going to have agriculture. I'm sorry, Australia, but I don't know how we're going to pay for our standard of living. No, look, I was, and I don't often like Twitter, but I was really grateful for, for Twitter for tweeting out these images about these farmers in the Netherlands. I just want to say another couple of things about what these farmers are protesting against. They've been told that the Netherlands has flouted its EU emissions, its mm. carbon dioxide and nitrogen emissions, OK? So, and, and just by the way, if you've got to be vegan and vegetarian, you need nitrogen. So you either get that from plants, uh, from, from animals, or you get that from nitrogen fertiliser, which does emit carbon dioxide. But one of the facts that I found absolutely fascinating in this story was that there's another plan that would grant financial aid to farmers who cease their operations. So they're going to give money to farmers in the Netherlands. This is a part of the protest. They're going to give money to farmers to stop farming. Now, the world's population is increasing. I'm with James. I don't want multinationals making fake meat in laboratories and pumping it out. And when you get to the core of what all of these rebellions are about, they, they're, they're against big pharma. They're against big chemistry, uh, big chemical corporations. It's going to be the big multinationals that pump this food out. So now they're looking at paying farmers, small farmers, to stop farming. I'm with you, Peter. When we first started talking about emissions from animals and, and farming, everyone sort of rolled their eyes and thought that we were hysterical. Well, here it is, writ large for you in the Netherlands. That protest was 1,000 kilometres long. 10,000 people took to the streets. Normally, I'm against people who stop the flow of traffic, particularly when it's Extinction Rebellion. But in this case, I support these farmers. I think they are terrific. Wake up, world. Yeah, James, it's not dissimilar to the yellow jacket protests in France, you know, when Macron makes all of these worldwide proclamations about climate change and then the reality of it hits home at the Bowser in France and a lot of workers uh, in, in, in France and, and elsewhere took to the streets, certainly of Paris, and shut down Paris 
in revolt and he had to make a whole range of concessions. Um, this is, the, I guess, the practical rub when people say, you know, I want all of, all of these uh, environmental policies front and centre, thinking that somehow the government's money is not their money, somehow that there won't be ramifications uh, domestically or locally, and, of course, they are. This is a huge issue. It's a huge issue. And, you know, what we're really fighting for around all of this, it's not just about the climate change. The climate change, the environment, that's only the kind of the proximate cover issue. The real issue, I think, that's really at the heart of this is about what kind of society are we? Are we, you know, a free society where individuals have control over our lives? Or is this a society where we give that all away to very large organizations and governments that regulate and control what people do? And I think that, you know, because there is uh, there has been for a long time in the West a kind of an emptiness about what we are and what we mean and, and what we're all about, uh, and that's been pushed through so many different avenues to schools elsewhere, uh, that people look for some sort of thing to give them meaning, and it becomes this climate change thing, uh, and then that becomes mm. a whole sort of motivator for them, but then the society that they're creating becomes one that's actually quite less free, and that's where we're going with all of this.